For over 15 years, the Central Avenue Jazz Festival has paid tribute to the legendary musicians who came to Central Avenue and created this musical hub between the 20s and the 1950s. This area received national recognition as a hotspot, a thriving cultural hub of intellectual thought, art, and music. In fact, it was even considered to be Los Angeles' version of the Harlem Renaissance. Located between 42nd Street and 43rd Street on Central Avenue, right in front of the historic Dunbar Hotel, jazz lovers come to hear the history of artists such as the legendary female jazz trumpetiste, Miss Clara Bryant, who at 83 years old still keeps it real. Michael Dolphin, son of the owner of Dolphins of Hollywood, recalls the history of Billy Diamond and other legendary musicians from that era. That history never leaves. The history of Central Avenue never leaves. There was this piano player down out of New Orleans. So Billy Diamond said, boy, you need to change your name. And Billy, what did you have him change his name to? Bat Domino. Clora is the only female jazz trumpetiste to have ever jammed with the legendary bird himself, Mr. Charlie Parker. And even though she considers herself to be an everyday person, how many 83-year-olds do you know that do this? And she is also well known for her ability to do a spot-on impression of jazz great Louis Armstrong, playing trumpet and that gravel voice and all. It had been more than a blessing for me to be here all these years from 45 this is 2010, and I'm thankful. For her supreme trumpet mastery, Clara was recognized by the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts with its Mary Lou Williams Women in Jazz Festival Award for 2002. She's also been on the college circuit as an instructor in jazz history. Hi, I'm Councilwoman Jan Perry, and who are you? Clara. Clara, she's just Clara. You know, best girl. Now, Clara is something else, you know. I came <laughs> walking in here today, I said, where's Clara, and what color flowers does she have in her hair, so that I could find her easily. And she leads the panel every year. She is a female role model, a jazz great, a living legend, Ooh. and we are very lucky to have her. And she was Ooh. just dancing here with her great grandson, uh, right as the Los Angeles Unified School District Band is playing. Uh, but Clara is an inspiration. She has got so much energy, so much inner beauty and outer beauty, oh, and her God. knowledge of music and jazz and Central Avenue and the history is unparalleled. So every year she comes here and gets us going, and I'm just really grateful. Thank you so much. She's beautiful. She's got a nice family, too. You've lived through so much, Clara, and you have a great family around you. Tell us what it means to be a part of the jazz legacy. Well, I can't really put it into words. It's a feeling. You know, that's what I tell everybody about music. Jazz music is a feeling. And, uh, and that's a goosebumpy feeling, too. I want to help everybody, help all these guys up here to is keep Central Avenue alive. Because when, when I came here and saw what was going on in Central Avenue, I could not believe it. Just thinking back about what went on, when I uh, stood outside the window of the downbeat and heard all that good music, I was with my younger brother and I said, how can they make all that music? Roy Porter was beating the hell out of the drum. And Teddy Edwards, oh man. Teddy, Teddy can play a ballad and milk notes and you just, hey, I wanted to cry and I wanted to hug him, but I couldn't do that because he wasn't my man. But 
he didn't have to be in love because I loved his music. Your heart surgery has prevented you from playing the trumpet, but Louis Armstrong had a great impact on your life. Tell us about that. Louis Armstrong in 1960 in Las Vegas. He was in the big room at the Riviera, and I was in the, in the lounge. And he and uh, Lucille had been sitting in the back watching my act, you know, because I was doing my impression of him. And he, after three or four days, I'm up there playing, can't give you anything but love. And I hear this other voice, and here comes the, Louis with his whole band coming from the big room, walking through the casino up on stage with me. To do, he knew the key, they all knew the key, they knew the arrangement, and they were singing and, and playing with me. Oh gosh. That was, uh, uh, you know, it was heavy time. Louis Armstrong did that? I didn't know he'd been listening that good, but he had, and it was great. And it was written up in the paper. And I can't say enough about this man because he started us all. There are a few other female trumpetist, but none with a history as long as yours. Well, not, no, not as long, but... And they didn't get, didn't get a chance to come to Basie and Duke and Dizzy and Charlie Shavers and Roy Elvis, you know. They didn't have that opportunity, but we have good girls out there playing, you know. Because that's what it's about. We have to keep it going, you know. I move out of the way and let somebody else come up, step up, you know. That's what it's about. Fortunately, our young jazz musicians will be able to listen to all your great stories because you are writing a book. Tell us about that. Ooh. Great stories. What's the name of your book? Trumpetistically Speaking, Love for Brian. And what is your book going to be about? It's my life. I'm talking my entire life. I'm talking it. I tell about everything. The late great jazz trumpeteer Dizzy Gillespie was a great friend of yours. Tell us your story about him. We were at a rehearsal, they may not like it at first, but it makes them and uh, there was a break. All of us know about people who so Dizzy like was standing in the back. Like he always kind of talked to my two sons. Yeah, we all know somebody like that. He was like a big old kid. Right. Yeah, he was. Like, no and all, somebody said no something no funny. Somebody kicked clapped his leg, him in. Kicked his legs out in front of him. He Go just jumped up and. And they caught him, otherwise he would have went splat. I mean, he just jumped up. We weren't going to let Dizzy Gillespie drop, that's for sure. <laughs> Dizzy always, uh, he always gave me my props, you know. He respected me as a person, as a musician, you know. What got you started as a trumpetist? Why the trumpet? Why the trumpet? Uh, my oldest brother played the trumpet. I didn't even know it until he was drafted into the army. He left it at home. And uh, when we started, with that year we started a, a marching band. And I wanted to be in the band. So I, I told my dad, he said, well, Luke, we don't have nothing. Uh, uh, we only have your brother's trumpet that's in the closet. I said, but I want to do it, daddy. He said, okay, Fluke. He called me Flukum Plunkum. <laughs> and I did, he, he went and got it. And I, the first note, the first thing I did, I made a sound. Uh, uh huh. Yeah. And Daddy, Daddy started crying. He always cried when he was proud or something. You know. I had a good dad. What uh, does it mean to have your family around you today, too? Oh Lord. But any time I can have them around me, that's heaven. Because that's what I'm about. Right. You know, I'm, I'm about my family, and they will tell you the same thing. Shabba-dum-dum, come on everybody, shabba-dum-dum.